What's going on everybody? Brandon Schaefer here. This beginning part is sped up just a little bit, only take a few seconds, but I just wanted to show you, show you guys how I drew this out. It's uh, six inches long by one inch high. Just two parallel lines and then kind of connect them and Boom, now you have a little uh, rectangle to work in. You can make it however big you want or however small. I just made mine kind of uh, somewhat manageable in, inside of a sketchbook. So now I start out here with a two, probably a 2B, I think. Something in that, in that range, and uh, a B or a 2B or a 3B. And this is where doing this exercise, this was one of the first exercises I did in college. This was the very first drawing exercise we had in college actually. It was to do this value scale. So I figured, you know what, this would be a really good lesson to put out there on YouTube for all the people that want to start drawing and begin drawing. You got to learn how to properly shade different values and create them smoothly without blending. I'm not saying that you can't ever blend. But if you can do it, if you can shade a smooth gradient without blending, um, then it's just another skill you have. You can, you're able to draw values without using these blending tools. Say if you're outside drawing somewhere and you all, all you have is a, a pen or a pencil and a sketchbook, you know, you don't need a, a paper towel or some kind of blending stump or anything like that. Um, so I'm just lightly, this is where you start to understand using pressure, different kinds of pressure. Very Right now I'm using very light pressure with this pencil. And as I go to the left, the left side is going to be the darkest side with the white or almost white being the right side. So as I move to the left, I'm kind of increasing that pressure when I need to and creating a darker value. As you'll see here, now moving on to a different pencil, just a little bit darker. Um, or maybe I didn't. I'll eventually I'll move to a different pencil. I'll just slightly go to like a 4B or a 5B. But I can still use this same pencil. Now if I shade in a different direction, uh, it's gonna create a darker value. So now I'm doing kind of diagonal strokes. Basically, it's like cross hatching, just in more of a uh, without any spaces. I know this video might seem a little bit boring, but it's important because you know this video is almost 15 minutes long, and it just shows you what goes into. Uh, getting an, a, a good kind of smooth gradient with values and shading with a pencil and it just shows the patience you have to have for drawing if you want your drawings to turn out uh, as good as you want them to you know getting that that high quality um, even just high quality sketches um, with just a little bit of shading here and there. You know, I don't do very, very detailed drawings, but I can do drawings that uh, show a good amount of detail and that are, have a more finished look to them. And I can get these different value ranges. So now you can definitely start to see a scale and a very smooth, somewhat smooth gradient. There's a few areas where there's, it's kind of patchy, um, but I'm always, I'm always looking at that and, and just fixing those small areas, like right there, it's kind of patchy, so I'm kind of just going over it real lightly, back and forth. This is very light pressure once you get to the right side, very light pressure, and then as it moves over, you know, you're just, Main, you're maintaining different pressures where you need them. Or varying, varying your pressure. Um, you know, right now I'm using a little bit more pressure now that I'm going over that. I'll probably change pencils here now, I think. 
I kind of went as far as I could with that pencil and I didn't I don't want to really put a dent in the paper. I don't want to press down really, really hard. Because the softer leads or softer graphites are going to uh, create a darker value and that's kind of what I'm going for. So for this exercise, I'm kind of just slowly building up the values. The important part is I'm staying in control. Staying in control. I'm not letting I'm not letting things get out of control or out of hand. I'm not letting the materials control me. I'm in control of my drawing and of the paper and of the pencil. And I'm just maintaining these subtle shifts in value. There's no reason for me to, you know, hurry on this <laughs> exercise. It's kind of a meditative type of exercise. You kind of have this, this one focus of just creating these different values in a very smooth fashion. So here I go again, starting out with probably a little bit, a little bit of medium pressure here, and then as it goes more to the right, I'm just letting go of the pressure a little bit, ever so slightly. And this is going to take practice. This takes a lot of practice to to get your the to get such a smooth gradient like this. And it, it, you'll, you'll see over time, this one, you know, there's lines in it. And then as it gets toward the end, um, it's pretty smooth for the most part. Obviously, nothing's ever going to be perfect. Um, but that's something as, like, humans, we're always striving for that perfection. But you can't get caught up in it. Uh, one great quote from hundreds of years ago is that, Perfect is the enemy of good, and I plan on doing a whole video on that topic. Uh, but just keep that in mind. Perfect is the enemy of good. Sometimes people get so caught up in wanting to make things perfect, and they spend all their time worrying about reaching perfection and putting in those small details, and it takes up all their time. It stops them from even doing anything. Instead of just doing something and putting something good out, they spend all their time trying to go perfect and you're never going to reach that perfection. Um, and the more good things you put out, the closer you will get and the easier it will become uh, to keep striving for that perfection over time. So now I switched pencils, obviously, and I'm, I have a Darker, darker graphite here. So now I'm just laying in this darker graphite. Like I said, slowly just layering these different, putting these different layers on over time. There's no need to hurry. So what I do is like I lay in a small little strip down and then I try to do my best to blend it out and then blend it all the way across the value scale if I can. You know, the darker you keep going, the less and less you have to keep going to the right because the right is already very light. It doesn't need to keep getting darker and darker. So the darker it ends up, it starts getting, then you'll notice that you only have to go like halfway over the scale. And then like the very last pencil or whatever, the very last value, you won't have to go, you know, only like one quarter over to the right. And I, I, may, I might have made my scale all too dark. Um, you know, it's hard to say. I'll have to wait till the end here and speak on that, but 
I did my best to try to keep it a very smooth transition from white all the way over to the darkest graphite uh, that I had, which I think is a 9B, either an 8B or a 9B. I'm pretty sure I have a 9B, and I used, uh, I used that pencil for the darkest value. But even still, charcoal can get almost black. Um, so if I was using charcoal for this, it would, it would have been looked a lot different. There you can see I'm lightly using an eraser to kind of lighten up some of the values there because I, I realized I was going a little too dark. And I just needed uh, some of those dark lines uh, erased. So now I'm coming in with the 9B right now. Because I'm getting really close to the end here. Um, but like I said earlier, play around with this scale. You can shade in all different directions. And um, I actually encourage you to uh, try, try going in all different directions because you'll get different values and different textures. Um, shading up and down, left and right, and then going diagonally. Um, it's just a way to get these, these deeper values. Uh, mostly for me, it looks like I, I went a little bit diagonal, and then most of the time I went from left to right. And I could have achieved darker values by going back over that left and right, going back over it with up and down strokes as well. I mean, you don't want it to look chaotic and messy, you want it to look kind of smooth. Um, so that's why I kind of went with this uh, just left and right. But be careful with going in all directions. You don't want it to look chaotic and you don't want your strokes to kind of be visible. But uh, just, just some ideas, just play around with it, have fun. Do it a few times and see how good you can get it without having, try to have as little strokes as visible as possible. Um, but anyway, Hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, check out my Patreon down the link below. Um, I'm always adding new videos on there, painting and drawing lessons like this one, uh, longer drawing lessons, more in depth, landscapes, portraits, hands, faces, all kinds of things. Anyway, um, take care of yourself. Peace.